Hello there, greetings everybody, and welcome here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph, I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So we're back on day number 24 of the series that I'm running for the month of November entitled My Favorite Rock Albums from 1979. So, and so the parameters are very simple. They have to be rock albums, they can't be like progressive uh, fusion or um, crooner music or diva music or anything other than rock that's all we're talking about here so I've picked out 30 from a list of about 80 that I looked through and I put them in an order from my least favorite to my most favorite so that's pretty much what we've done here there's no other parameters um, there could be multiple albums from groups but I can tell you right now there's only one one person or one individual that has two albums on this list and it's simple for the simple reason that just about everybody at this point was putting out a album at the most during a year very few were doing double albums anymore or doing two albums in a year so this album um so the record store that i go to which is encore up in kitchener um they every once in a while buy a kind of um buy out somebody's um estate of albums and they get tons of stuff from those estates and, w and the guy told me oh there's a lot of progressive stuff coming in I said, oh, good, good. let me know when because i'm on that so i came in and they had almost the entire jethro tull catalog in their used bin and, and they take very good care of their albums so almost about half of my stuff is from the used bin because they're so good and I got five tall albums that day and this was one of them Stormwatch from Jethro Tull and this one actually was the first one I started to listen to of the four I played it in the car all the way to uh, where I was going and all the way back I've listened to it a few times this is a great album I'm so impressed by this because this is as close to Songs from the Wood as I've heard so far in my quest for another Songs from the Wood, which is actually one of my favorite rock albums, not just my favorite Tall album. So this one has a lot of that similarity here, so I've been playing this a lot because I like it a lot. So much so that it's already on this list. That's how good it is, I think. So let's let's get into the album, talk about the album a bit. So this album was released on September 14th, 1979. The album, of course, is called Stormwatch. We have a picture. I'm, I'm assuming that's Ian Anderson behind those binoculars there. You also have a polar bear on the back. Um, I think a lot of the songs are very similar in nature and i think there's just kind of a theme that runs through it i'm not quite sure what that theme is because i haven't been listening to it long enough but i do know i like it a lot so there are 10 tracks on this five on the a side and five on the b side the opening track which is uh, north sea oil um this is an ex excellent instrumental kind of um now, actually, it's not an instrumental. It has excellent instrumentation on it. It is a vocal song. There are lyrics to the song. There's a lot of really good flute work on that track, too. I think it's, uh, for an opening of an album, really good. Um, and the other song, on the other two songs on this side that I want to talk about a bit of Dark Ages. This is an excellent charging song. What do I mean by that? Well, it's very aggressive, very forward, has a lot of uh, really strong instrumentation on it that it's got that really kind of in your face kind of uh, Jethro Tull that I like and kind of like what you would get from Hunting Gay Hunting Girl it's part of the reason why I like this song so much um Warm Sporan which is the last track on side A is an instrumental pretty much flute dominated but some nice flute on here quite a, quite a bit of it you can flip the album over and you get the second side although this is a cd so it's all on one side um let me just put this down for a minute so you have the opening track on side b which is some things on the move very typical tall sounding like there's no way you could mess this up with any other band just such a great tune 
Um, the next song, Old Ghost, has a lot of kind of keyboard and synthesizer parts on here. The the uh, Dee Palmer doing the synthesizer parts, I believe, and John Evan doing the more keyboard oriented stuff. Um, Flying Dutchman, good track. Um, the other song on this this side that I like, uh, Don Regal. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, this kind of reminds me of Solstice Bells. It has that kind of same kind of area that it in, that it encapsulates. Um, very very similar song. I mean, they don't really, they don't. There's nothing that sounds the same, but they just they both have that kind of feel to them. I guess is maybe what I'm looking for. But I like this song quite a bit too. It's one of my favorites on the album already. Um, you know, the good part about this album is that it has my classic kind of my favorite era of the band, which features John Glasscock, who. I think was maybe the first really strong bass player that they had and I wished he'd survived I think this was his last album he died shortly after this would have been nice if he'd continued with the band because in in, in addition to losing him they also lost Barrymore Barlow who I think is one of the great drummers underrated drummers he left the band for that reason as well um, his own reasons but uh, so you lose two great guys almost immediately um, and then of course John Evan and Dee Palmer on this album as well as Ian and Martin Barr. This is a absolute fantastic album I think and I, I have no doubt that this will end up if I was to do this list a couple years down the line this album will be in the top five for sure absolutely going to be one of my favorite tall albums I'm sure of it and uh, that's why it had to go on today's list so there you have it storm watch from jethro tall 1979 so if you have any comments to make about this album or anything i've said or any comments regarding the series or anything else you can put them all in the um, comment section below um i love the comments it tells me now well, it tells me a few things first it tells me what you like which is important for me to know uh, it tells me how people feel about the music that I'm talking about in general, which is what I like. And, you know, if I'm off on something, too, it corrects me. And when I go forward, I view things a little differently if I'm corrected and they happen to be right. If you, if you want to insult me, you can, but it's not going to change. In fact, you, you just put a wall up between me and you having any kind of a conversation. So I try never to insult people if I can. And so that's just the way I am. Anyways, any comments, put them in the comment section below. Please hit the like button. It's much appreciated. Hit the subscription, subscription button and the bell so that you'll be warned of this content. And we'll be back again tomorrow with another album for this series in November. My favorite rock albums of 1979. So have yourself a good day. Take care.